All good lessons have a middle. The content is covered in good lessons. But if you want to have a great lesson, you need a beginning, which leads to the middle, but you also need an end. You need to have a resolution. This is extremely important. Lesson planning can take a variety of different formats. It might be a linear chain, a sequence of events. It might be a wheel where you go through a process and it's somewhat iterative. Or it could be a wheel in a hub where you go through that circular process connecting to perhaps an, an, an example in the middle. Or it could be a linear sequence that connects to an application. The key thing with creating a learning moment is that when you're looking at new learning, you want to identify what the learner will be able to do. You want to create that riveting or connecting moment. Um, you want to either use a demonstration, some type of an instructional activity that pulls that learner in. And you want to actually cause what I like to refer to as that aha moment. Ah, the aha moment. Well, that's the moment when the lights go on, that epiphany moment. And here's an explanation. It's, it's really about taking a learner through a process of showing them a problem, an issue, uh, perhaps causing some disequilibrium. Uh, that creates a desire, interest, imagination, or frustration, even anger or hostility within control. And then from that, there's that inquiry process, that logic, and, and there's that wondering what's going on. And then once a student resolves that, they have that aha where it sort of resolved that, resolves that disequilibrium. That aha moment is what you're looking for with your lesson planning process. Now, all great lessons that have the beginning, the middle, and the end would follow somewhere along the lines of the seven-step process. The first thing is gaining the learner's attention. This is the hook. This is really getting them in. It could be used by an example, by a quote, by a video. There's a variety of things you can do for the hook. The second point is to identify, well, what is it that the learner is going to be able to do or learn or experience? What is the objective, right? You would then want to find out how much does your learner know? Right? Because if they already know everything, maybe you can go on to something deeper. Or if they don't know as much as you assume they know, you might be able to modify that and present to them what they need. So once you have a sense of where they're at, then you present the new material. And this often is where a lot of the learning happens and a lot of time will, will be spent. But as you're presenting that new material, don't forget you want the student to be engaged. So while they're working with the new material, you need to have that opportunity for practice and feedback and, and their iterations. Because remember, the learner must take ownership of the learning. Right? Once they've gone through that lesson uh, planning process and they've experienced it, you then want to have a sense, maybe through asking questions, um, could even be a, a short quiz, or having them demonstrate something that they, they know how to actually do what the objective is. And then you summarize it and close off the lesson. All good lessons have the beginning, the middle, and the end. And it's your responsibility to create that learning environment where you take advantage of this instructional process. So when you're building your lesson plans, make sure you use this wonderful instructional process.